Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we all bow our heads and look to God in prayer? Gracious God and loving Father, merciful Savior, thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come together to worship the Lord Almighty on this Sunday. As we begin this worship service, we beseech the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and help us to grow more in our spiritual journey. We also commit the speaker of this day, hide him and reveal your truth so that your truth may set us free and enrich us to grow more in our spiritual enrichment. In Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. to worship by following the second order of worship. Let us worship God. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father, from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and love. Let everyone who is thirsty come, let every, anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall sing forth your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it is in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen adoration of the trinity holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory glory be to you o lord most high blessed is he who has come and is to come in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest praise be to you o god the father who created all things by your power and wisdom and loved the world so as to give your son to be your savior to be our savior praise be to you o god the son who was made human like us in all things except sin and was delivered from for our offenses and raised again for our justification praise be to you o god the holy spirit who does lead us into all truth and thus shed abroad the love of god in our hearts all praise and glory be to you o god father son the holy spirit for ever and ever amen let us enter into the act of confession we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness I'll get up and go to my father and I'll say to them I'll say to him Father I have sinned against heaven and before you I'm no longer worthy to be called your son the time is fulfilled the kingdom of God has come near repent and believe the good news for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin let us kneel and examine ourselves in silence let us humbly confess our sins to the almighty god almighty and most merciful god we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep we have followed too much devices and desires of our own hearts we have offended against the holy laws you have left and done those things which we should have done and we have done those things which we should not have done and there is no help in us but you o lord have mercy upon us miserable of endless spare them o god who confess the faults restore them that are penitent accord into your promises declare to human kind in christ jesus our lord and grant o most merciful god for his sake that we may here after live a godly righteous and just life to the glory of your holy name amen may the almighty and merciful lord grant us pardon and remission for all our sins time for amendment of life the grace and comfort of the holy spirit amen praise the lord the lord's name be praised Dear brother in Christ, as we all know, we are not able to meet uh, in church to worship the Lord Almighty, but still, the church as a community, we are able to meet online to worship the Lord. So until we get clear guidelines from the government, we'll use this link to worship the Lord, and if God possible, if if God willing, if there is possibility. we might have a services during weekdays birthdays and wedding anniversaries for this week <clears throat> 16 january mr manoj zakaria mr l peter mrs s jabasili 18 january mr colin dennis lily white mrs and mr actor banshaw a celebrated wedding anniversary 19th January Mr Henry William 21 21st January Mrs Astelta Campbell Mr Franklin Lawrence 22nd January Mr Philip Samuel Mrs Ruby Jairaj may god bless all the members who celebrate the birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week shall we all bow our heads and look to god in prayer a merciful god and wonderful savior heavenly father we thank you lord for 
the life that you have given to all of us. And especially we commit and pray for the members, those who are celebrating their birthday this week, as they enter into New Year, this New Year may be a blessed year for them. Lord, shower your manifold blessings upon them so that they might receive all your blessings and enjoy God's providence in the days to come. We also pray for the couples who will be celebrating the wedding anniversaries. Thank you, Lord, for journeying with them till this day. As they journey further, we do hope that you will continue to journey with them to have happy and peaceful life the days to come. Bless each and every one of them who are part of this fellowship and as they are praying for their personal needs. In Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 63 verses 11 to 14. Isaiah chapter 63 verses 11 to 14. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, Where is he who brought, up, brought them up out of the sea? with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit within them, who led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they might not stumble, as a beast goes down into the valley and the Spirit of the Lord causes him to rest. So you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. There ends the reading. Glory be to God. May this life that I live be a present to give to you, Lord. May the words that I do always be accepted by you. The days I have left, may I hide it in a cleft of the rock of ages. I pray until my life is true. Make me holy for you. Make me holy for you, and teach me how to pray. for today is taken from gospel according to st john chapter 14 verses beginning from 15 to 21 st john chapter 14 verses beginning from 15 to 21 if you love me keep my commandments and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper 
that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, you will live also. At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Here ends the Gospel reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Should I do medicine or can I follow my heart into fashion designing? Should I move or stay? Do I stay single or should I get married? Life is a series of decisions, small decisions, big decisions. We make our decisions and it is said that our decisions make us. Why 
because choices have consequences. Are you going through a season of decision making? Are you looking for God's guidance in your life? If you are wondering how God guides us, well, this message is for you. In the Old Testament story of Moses and the Hebrew people, we have an interesting picture of the Holy Spirit that is very often overlooked. After four centuries of slavery, Pharaoh set the two million Hebrew slaves free and the promised land now awaits them. But there is only one problem. They didn't know where it was and how they were to get there. On their own, they stood no chance of survival. Let's read the story in Exodus chapter 13 and verse 21. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire. Moving on, Exodus 14, verses 19 and 20. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front of them and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. And this went on the entire time the Israelites were in the wilderness. Again, reading from Exodus 40, verses 36 to 38. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they would not set out until the day it lifted. What a blessing it must have been for the Israelites to have this guide. You know, um, cloud by day, pillar by night, I mean fire by night, turning left, turning right, over the mountain, you know, they, they just follow, followed the cloud. And um, this was their divine GPS. They just had to look up to the heavens, no stress, of decision making and yet and yet I want to say this today we also have what the Hebrews had on that day and we have Isaiah to thank Isaiah the prophet for telling us the name of the one who indwelt the cloud and the fire we go to Isaiah as he explain, explains this deliverance of the Hebrews. Isaiah chapter 63, and I'm reading bits from verses 11 to 14. Isaiah 63. Where is he who put his Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand? And like a horse in open country, they did not stumble like cattle that go down to the plain. They, give, they were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. So, who led the children of Israel through the wilderness? Answer, the Holy Spirit. Who leads the children of God today? Answer, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, yes. Jesus said, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So we have what the Hebrews had, the same Holy Spirit to guide us. Yes, life is a journey of decisions. And yes, God has provided us sage and wise and divine counsel. 
God did not save you and then abandon you. No. He saved you and then he moved in. He is here to guide you, to show you where to turn, where to stand, to protect you from, you know, in the front and behind. We have the supernatural direction that the Hebrews had in ancient times. Then we can ask the question, why do we get confused? Why is it hard sometimes to know which way to turn? How do we hear from God? Let's consider a couple of answers. Firstly, firstly, and very importantly, stop following a culture that does not follow God. Stop following a culture that doesn't follow God. The Bible makes it clear that we, if we are listening to them, we don't hear him. That was the point Paul made in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, very well known words. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. The way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasant and perfect. Now, notice many things here. First of all, God has a will for you. And that will is good and pleasing and perfect. And you can learn to know it. How? By not copying the customs and behavior of the world. We choose not to listen to them. Them being society. We choose instead to listen to God. In fact, following the crowd can lead us into trouble. Yeah, following the crowd can lead us off a steep cliff. The Turkish shepherds in the New Testament watched 1,500 sheep go over the edge of a cliff. 1,500 sheep! My goodness, how is it possible? For some under undetermined reason, perhaps, a single sheep jumped over the edge. And that one was followed by a second. And then a dozen. And then several dozen. And over the short period of time, the shepherds tried to stop uh, this pandemonium. But they could not. Fifteen hundred sheep jumped over the edge. 450 were killed. The others would have died except that they landed on the bodies of the first jumpers. Now what were those sheep thinking? Were they thinking at all? I'm thinking that they were not thinking. Yes. So the moral of the lesson, don't follow the sheep. If you want to soar like an eagle, don't hang out with dumb sheep. Don't listen to them. The first decision in learning to hear from God is not what should I do, but whom should I listen to? Who do I listen to? Who is the ultimate authority in your life? Is it them or is it God? If the answer is them, people, you are not going, you're just not going to discern God's will for you, God's direction. You know, if the answer is TV personalities or sports celebrities or Instagram heroes, um, you know, um, or people like that, you're not going to hear God's will. And you can add to that list horoscopes, palm readers, and witchcraft, and the like. If you're following the stars, 
You're not going to follow the sun. Stop following the culture that doesn't follow God. Secondly, start listening to the Spirit who speaks on behalf of God. You know, a wonderful thing happened to the children of Israel. You remember, Moses and the people were given a command to build the tabernacle. The tabernacle was like a portable temple. And after the completion of the tabernacle, a most wonderful thing happened. The presence of God descended from on high and entered the holy place. You read about it in Exodus chapter 40 verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Had you and I been there, had been present at that time, we would have elbowed each other, pointed to the mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant and whispered to each other, that's where God lives. That's where God dwells. And uh, with that image in mind, you and I can place our hands on our hearts and say confidently, today, this is where God lives. This is where God lives. Come on, do it. This is where God lives. An undeniable miracle happened on the day you gave your heart to Christ. He gave His Spirit to you. He turned your body into a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you and so the one who led the children of Israel through the wilderness is the same one who will lead you and me through the wilderness this wilderness called life until we reach the promised land heaven well we can ask the question how actually does he guide us the spirit the Holy Spirit helps us in two ways, at least two ways. The verse and the voice. The verse and the voice. The primary tool of the Holy Spirit is the verse, the Bible. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The reason the devil doesn't want you to open the word of God is because this is the primary communication tool through which the Holy Spirit speaks to us. God's will is found in God's word. Do you desire to know God's will for your life? Then open God's word. The psalmist said it, said it like this, Psalm 119 verse 105 your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path we need to get let God's word to be our ultimate authority our go-to book today you have a hundred and one people telling you what's best for you sadly they don't really know listen listen young people especially just because they have a swagger or just because they have a presence on social media that doesn't mean they know the meaning of life you will have to decide who will have ultimate authority on your life the sheep going over the edge or god the creator who knows me and loves me those sheep will tell you your value depends on how pretty or how cool you are, or how much money is in your pocket. Scripture will tell you that you matter to God because God made you in His image. The crowd says, oh, 
just do what you what you want what you feel like but scripture says no there is a way that seems right to a person but that way can lead to death the first place to go to is the verse and then oftentimes god will affirm what you found in the verse with a voice by voice i don't mean some dramatic voice from heaven no this could be the voice of someone you admire wise counsel a friend a mentor a sermon it could even be the voice of nature the stars the mountains but we always go first to the bible god will never disagree with himself he will speak it first through the verse and he may affirm it later through a voice his voice and jesus promised if the sheep Jesus promised it the sheep recognizes his voice my sheep hear my voice the voice of the good shepherd and god will begin to speak to you in ways that you will begin to recognize and one of those is through the voice of inner convictions convictions because as you read god's word it will intermingle with this new character this new creation that god is creating and you will begin to sense the voice of the lord a knowing a nudge which will tell you wait this isn't right i shouldn't be doing this or that's the better path i know most people are going that way but i think god wants me to go this way that's the inner voice sometimes you may not hear that voice but that's okay go to someone you trust and seek counsel get direction but until you have affirmation from the verse don't move you know god loves you too much to leave you wandering in the darkness all by yourself you are not in this on your own you don't need to crack a code or go to bible college to understand this your heavenly father is doing 99% of it lean on god he will lead you allow me to finish with a story the story is told of a man who decided that he would leave europe and settle in the united states for a better life for him and his family he didn't have much money but um the plan was that he would scrape together all the money he had and buy a ticket on the steamship that would take him to the US and he would go there and get a job and then he would send for his family to join him and so that's what happened that's what he did on the voyage you know he didn't have much money he had spent all his money on his ticket he had hardly anything left for his food so what did he do he had brought with him a box of cheese and um some crackers cheese and crackers and he subsisted with this for 12 days in his tiny cabin on that voyage eating cheese and crackers he would often look longingly through the window and see the passengers eating their luscious meals and he would turn around and slowly eat his crackers and cheese on the last day of his journey he came out on deck to stare at the statue of liberty and as he was standing there a steward appeared and stood next to him he said forgive me sir but i've been wanting to ask you a quest we've not seen you in the dining room all these days so the man explained i don't have much money and what money i had i spent on the ticket i just had enough for crackers and cheese the steward looked at him and said oh sir did you not understand that the three meals a day were included in your ticket we saved you a slot a spot at the table 
but you never came. Dear child of God, do you not understand that the guidance of God was included in God's covenant with you and he saved you a spot at the table? Let's feast on the presence and the promise of the Holy Spirit, your unfailing friend and guide. Let us pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your promise. We don't want to be like those sheep. I want to remember every single member at St. Stephen's Church and anyone who's listening to this. We want to grow as children of the good Father. Help us, each one of us, to learn to recognize your voice, our good shepherd, and respond to your verse, to your voice, to your leading, knowing that you will take us not only through this journey of life, but that you will finally take us home. Lord, it's been a difficult time these past days and weeks and months, but we thank you that you have not left us alone. I pray for every one of my dear brothers and sisters. We pray, Lord, that you will bless each one of us, that you will answer our prayers, that you will come into our lives, guide us, lead us, protect us, till we finally reach the promised land. This we pray in Jesus' name, our Good Shepherd. Amen. Thank you. Let us affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived with the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue to pray. The Lord bless you and with your spirit let us pray. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Let us say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Our gracious God and loving Father, Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come together and worship the Lord Almighty this day. And thank you for the speaker, Mr. Thomas George, as he brought us the word of God today. Yes, Lord, continue to use him for your glory. And we also pray for Mr. Colin, who was able to give a special number today. And we also thank you, Lord, for Samuel Godwin and Benker for participating in this worship service to be part of the Bible readings. Bless them abundantly, bless their families. And we also come to pray for all the members of St. Stephen's. We come to pray for the elderly, youth, women, children. We pray for them, for their health, O oh Lord. During this pandemic situation, continue to protect them from all dangers. We especially come to pray for the people, those who are engaged themselves in their workplaces, might be in the private sector or in the government organizations, or with the IT field, or if they are into business. Bless their 
what bless all the endeavors of lord and bless all the children as they pursue their studies grant your wisdom so that they will be able to excel in the studies of lord and now lord we also pray that particularly this time the covid 19 spread is very much fastly spreading all over the country especially in metro cities and we thank we pray lord to take control over the situation and we also pray for doctors nurses health workers health care workers and all the people those who are involved in this particular time involving themselves to help the people and as they are part of this healing and restoration guide them direct them and protect them from all dangers oh lord we also pray for the people those who are infected as lord as you touch upon them they will be able to receive your healing and get back to their homes as you have mentioned as you have said take your bed and go home as lord we also pray that as people are suffering from this covid and you will help them to get back to their homes in a peaceful manner we also pray for our nations we pray for india we pray for indian prime minister the all the other ministers and we pray also pray for tamil nadu chief minister and all the other officials as they take active part in the life of the people as they try and do better things for the needy and poor yes lord guide guide them grant your wisdom so that they'll be able to help the people those who are in need and we also pray for the missionaries pastors all the bishops and we pray for the church church communities congregations yes lord yes help us to continue to witness you as our personal savior in whatever way we can and we especially come to pray for the missionaries as they take the gospel of christ reaching out the people those who are unreached and at times they are very much challenged they are threatened they are fearful to reach out the people but lord because of your strength and they'll be able to reach out to the people and harvest more souls to a uh, to include them in the kingdom of god and we also now come to pray that all of us who are gathered who are joined together in this worship bless them abundantly in christ mighty name we pray amen let's receive benediction in the grace of our lord jesus christ love of the father and sweet come the holy spirit rest and abide with us all now and forevermore amen Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh what a foretaste of glory divine There are salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song This is my
am happy and blessed Watching and waiting Looking above Filled with His goodness Lost in His love bless each and every one of us as we approach new week ahead may god bless everyone thank you one and all for joining with us god bless everyone